Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. We had dinner with him um, a couple, uh, six weeks ago for the board meeting, and his wife who brought it up because only a, a significant other can. And after she had a couple of uh, glasses of Chardonnay, no, she had Riesling. She brought it up. The opportunity cost loss. I wish I had the money of the guys that could have made the money and that decided to come here after the longest is 13 years. Of course, the longest is never. They never came, okay? 13 years, who's now up there. But the 12-year guy that took is not up there, but he's made a lot of money. Both German, I might add. Uh, yeah, opportunity cost loss is a bitch. It's a bitch. And for those that, you know, I wish I had known you 20. I've been here for 30 years, so. Um, but but he, he, he'd be a lot farther along. He's farther along now. He's now made, since that filming, I think we just made our 28th or 29th acquisition. Uh, uh, but he's, not, he's only kind of feeling rich now. But he's, when, you, when you hit the cash register and you get 10, 20, 30 million, that, that's it's like a flush, like an adrenaline rush. You know, the, uh, uh, and when you hit the cash register and it's multiples of that. And then, you know, when you hit the cash register, and then, then you get numb. And then pretty soon, I, I'm not being braggadocious, then 50 million. I used to say, when I, in my neighborhood, we had one Chinese family. And uh, the Chinese guy was about five, six years older than I was, and he taught me how to play poker. And uh, so we're playing um, a seven-card, uh, five-card draw, blah, blah. And he says, up a dollar. I see ants fuck a dollar. He was saying, I'll see ants fuck for a dollar. Now, he's a very wealthy guy now. 50 million. I see ants fuck 50 million. You become desensitized or sensitized. I'm not sure which is the right word. And um, just like I'm not ashamed of the million and a half pounds of cars out there, but I don't see a million and a half pounds of cars. You know, I, I just, I don't. Uh, I remember the first rolls I got when I was 25 and a half years old. I polished that son of a bitch. I mean, I was all uh, uh, leather, uh, what do you call it for the leather? And I mean, uh, there was never any dust in, you know, the things that you put your feet on and stuff. Now, anybody cleaned the fucking car lately? You know, see, <laughs> 50 years later. By the way, uh, Rolls-Royce is doing a thing on me. Uh, uh, 50 years with Rolls-Royce, three Rolls-Royces. It's going to be published in the next few weeks. Uh, the, um, so there's not that many three Rolls families that aren't, you know, the royal family or, you know, Prince Howard or somebody. But you get desensitized. You do. And I want you all, many of these guys up there are desensitized, you know. Some of them have already gone to sleep. Um, we have a couple guys that are still working as hard as if they, first dollar they make, they don't keep track of their wealth. Now you guys, I'm being smart ass, you're going to spreadsheet every fetic and penny you make. I recommend against that. Because at some level, the lines cross. Right now, it's inelastic demand. You ha there's no limit to how much money you want to make, in theory. But that wanes. I know it's hard for you to believe, but that changes. That changes. And when it really changes, and when you have money for a while, and then your kids are used to the money, and then your grandkids, well, fuck, it. we're in a money family. And as our daughter said many, many years ago, when we were talking about poverty or something, she says, I decided to have wealthy parents. I don't really give a damn about that. Now, she is more sensitive than I am, and she wants to save the world more than I do. But when she was 15, 16 years old, that's exactly what she said. You know, she's sorry she said it, because I remind her of it every once in a while. But you get desensitized. You see all the horrible things that are on TV. Well, how much horror can you take? And you see the stupidity of government, which is pretty consistent as an adult, you know, 65 years, I mean, or 60 years, uh, you can never underestimate how stupid the governments can be. And uh, so, but yeah, five years took him. Five, and then he, you know, he got his 
Uh, he worked uh, and worked on his uh, undergraduate and his master's degree for seven or eight years. And now he says, you know, should I didn't need those degrees? But in Germany, degrees are a big thing. You know, hair professor, doctor, you know, they, uh, they, they like to associate a, a title with you. But there's a big difference between him and Simon. Well, not just because he's made a lot more money than Simon so far, but uh, two different personalities. They probably live 500 kilometers from each other, more or less. Um, two different personalities, both well-educated. Yeah. I was just going to say, I probably want to, I'm probably more German because I want to live in a lake at some point, too. Uh, the guys, I'm telling you, I used to have a place on Possum Kingdom Lake in Texas. Possum Kingdom Lake, which is the second or third largest lake in America. And the, um, and the, the rich guys, the oil guys, had houseboats. And so I could use their houseboat. I mean, house, I mean houseboat big, like three or 4,000 square feet houseboat. Okay, and they'd sit out there and, you know, they smoke cigars and the Coors beer and they'd fish at night and shit like that. But during the summer, boom, boom, the fucking uh, yeah, mosquitoes and the little bats. I mean, uh, so the um, lakes are great. Now, this lake, the lock, um, no mosquitoes because we have a lot of birds that eat them. But the, the, the ducks and the swans, when the kids were little, They'd go out rowing, and the, and the swans would knock the kids off the boats. They would swim, at, you know, they'd fly at them in like a, like a B-25, you know, about two feet off the ground, and they'd hit the kids. And so they got, in, you know, into the, the habit of, uh, you know, dodging the kids. But, I mean, you will find ways to spend the money that you haven't even thought of yet that are in addition to this. You, you will invent ways to burn through money. Stuff that you don't need. You already buy shit. Even poor people buy shit they don't need. But when you have a bunch of money, uh, you will reinvent that. You will buy shit on steroids that you don't need. Um, and that's all part of the game. And, you know, and Sally and I, we've been to the yachts, the planes, and penthouses and this shit. Although we wish we had a couple of the penthouses back. Because, I, you know, I never thought I'd be back in London uh, I, I would have bet all my money. And um, we had a great penthouse there, but by the by. But what else about Andreas? Yes, sir. Actually, a comment that you made uh, in, the, in the clip, um, you cautioned against, well, I was curious, what's your, what's the parameters on? You want to ask me do, about exit again? No, no, no. Just okay. do drop everything and do QLA. Don't drop everything and do QLA. No, where's the, where's I normally call, say this for the close. If you're in school that you don't need to be in, but if you're in school and you're getting a degree and you're one year away, finish. If you're in med school and you're not one year away, drop out. If you're in a PhD program and unless you're one year away, drop out. If you're in a master's program, unless you're you know, close, drop out. If you're in a bachelor's program, you know, drop out. One year, now you're going to stay in school. Like, uh, and you're staying in school, you're one year away from a master's, whatever the degree is, fine. You can do this and be in school. There's no question about it. You can do this and have a job. Unless you've got a bunch of money stored away, and you never have enough, believe me, you run out of money, keep your job and work on QLA. Andreas is a perfect example. He worked 60 hours a week for a year and a half while he was doing his first QLA. He drew no salary uh, for a year and a half. And then after he made four or five acquisitions, he and the CFO could draw a salary. There was enough cash flow. Okay. Uh, and it's not, you know, even though, you know, it may, you may have two million in EBITDA the first year, you're not drawing 600,000 euros. You're drawing, and there's charts. KPMG, Oxford University, companies from zero to five million, what is the CEO, what they should make? Five to 10 million, what should they make? 10 to 25 million, what should they make? And you draw that minimal salary, not because anybody's keeping you to that minimal salary, because shit happens. And when shit happens, it's the beginning, the embryonic stage, the first two or three, four years of your business. 
when you're in business 14 years, something may happen, but you're not, you're not going to go broke because you've got a decline in cash flow for two or three months. In the beginning, if you have a decline in cash flow the first two or three months, you'll be out of business. And to the extent that you have commercial loans, you're going to be uh, breaking covenants with banks, and they're going to be coming, and God forbid they come and you know, take over the business from you. So uh, you can't go to school. You can't work. I w recommend. But the best way, balls out if you can afford to do it, do nothing else but QLA. For those of you that live at home, for kids, your, your parents are your problem, but there's a dichotomy. We've got a lot of kids that live in the basement. Uh, you're a little old to be living at home, so, but anyway, they live in the fucking basement. And some of the kids have made that work. Uh, some people are going through the program with a significant other, okay? Although we have in excess of 60% divorce rate of, or breakup rate for couples because, you know, it's tough to fight a battle on two fronts. So, but if your significant other is in the program with you, uh, then you got a higher chance. The car liens are an exception. I mean, I've only got two couples up there, and the car liens uh, are, you know, both work in the business. They're in the same business. Uh, different roll-ups amongst couples don't work out too well. Uh, I think we only have one success story in all these years where she did one thing and he, he did the other. Uh, but, you know... It depends on, you know, uh, how committed. In, in Sally's case, in my case, we're both workaholics. I mean, you know, the, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're both workaholics. We like to work. Uh, the, uh, and the kids are gone. Uh, so uh, that's cool. But if we weren't both workaholics, you know, we're, we're going to Paris uh, and, uh, and we're going to Greece here, uh, my birthday, so Sally is planning this stuff for my birthday. It's coming up in a few weeks. Um, but normally, we wouldn't take that much time off. Uh, but we're, we're working. You know, we'll have our computers. Um, and, uh, I, we went on the uh, Queen Mary, the big Queen Mary across the Atlantic a few years ago. And we were the only, you know, you sit out in the lounges, and they, oh, all the old gits are out there in the sun. And uh, we were the only couples that had computers. And a couple of the old gets my age, you know, would ask Sally, uh, are you playing games on the computer? Or, you know, I said, oh, no, my husband's working. And now, again, not being bad, we had the biggest suite on the Queen Mary, which is a big fucking suite. And, uh, the, uh, and they knew uh, we had a reception in our room, blah, blah, blah. And he's working. Because they always think you have to work because you got to pay the bills. No, no, he likes to work. Yeah, so at the bar, these old, and you know that with Zimmer frames, those things that you go like this, and they come, oh, and then they find out I'm a year older than he is, you know, the, uh, but um, Brits like to retire. They, they, they like their leisure time, as they say. Um, but so when you pick your partner, I normally say this the last night, pick it correctly. I'm not talking about your business partner. I'm talking about your, uh, you know, uh, your uh, um, sexual partner, if you will. Uh, pick wisely because, I mean, it can be uh, detrimental to you. Not can it almost always is detrimental to your uh, growth in QLA unless they're a workaholic, or unless they're a professional. You know, we've got a couple of guys that are married to top-notch uh, uh, litigators, uh, M&A lawyers in New York, that are used to working, and they appreciate working. Uh, because every couple will learn to appreciate rich things. Every couple will learn to appreciate luxury. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, I get, that's one guarantee I, I can make. You will get used to that easily, spending money. Um, not necessarily on all, on all worthwhile things, but spend, you're spending money. But the fact that you're working through the holidays. The fact that um, the reason we're not giving the hardcore over Christmas this year for the first time in seven or eight years, but a lot of people, not just because they're not Christians, a lot of people think Christmas is a pain in the ass. So we're normally oversold at least 100% for the hardcore. This year it's in early December because we're taking our family for the first time since I can't remember last, we're taking them someplace over Christmas. So. The, uh, we're not, I'm not giving the seminar hardcore, I'm giving the hardcore early in December. But um, Simon, at one end of the continuum, the 
you know, tough guy, wants to push people around. And then Andres is more in the middle, both German, German heritage, uh, but both uh, methodical, both uh, follow the process. Um, by his own admission, Simon fell off the wagon, so to speak, for a little bit, but got right back on. Uh, Andreas hasn't really stopped, fallen off the wagon, but was slowed down because uh, he were to, worked a 60-hour job. But the important thing is, Andreas is an investment transaction professional who he tells you did not help him in QLA. That, did not, that background did not help him in QLA. I mean, and he, I'm sure he said, it made it harder because he saw things uh, that are real uh, and uh, that are scary. I mean, Simon alluded to the same thing. You know, I, I see things because I'm a healthcare professional. Uh, but on the one hand, Andrews was not a healthcare professional. He was a financial professional. It slowed him down. On the other hand, Simon was a healthcare professional in the same area. And by the way, I, I wanted to mention, you look uh, uh, strange when he was talking about, on the one hand, he had 200 clients, and then he had 18. Well, now, we're not talking about the 40-bed thing. He has got the hospitals give his business patients, then then they send professionals, chiropractors, etc., to their home. So it's not like they have to have a house for 200 people. So the smallest deal they bought had 18 patients, and the largest was over 200 patients. And that's why the margins are so big, because you, you shouldn't have to have office space. Okay, some of the people, uh, Andre, Andres uses uh, office space. Now, he has beds and home health, so he has both. Um, whereas Simon just has home health. That's not to say he will not expand into something else. But, and that's why the home health is the easiest, the most profitable, the easiest to manage. Uh, and then you're managing, let's say that you're the people that go out for physiotherapy or whatever, and so they're calling you, and most of it's done, uh, on, in fact, almost all of it's done online, and now they even text people, you know, can you be at such and such a house in two hours? And as Simon was saying, I didn't realize that it was only 55 minutes. So it's a 55-minute hour. I didn't, I, I, the first time I recall hearing that. So the guy drives out there. They get paid for the driving time. So it takes them 30 minutes to get there, 55 minutes working on the person, and 30 minutes back. So you're, you're ultimately paying them for two hours um, service. And then the home health company, the owner, you know, let's say they charge 100 euros. He gives the professional 60 euros and the home health company collects 40 euros. I don't know what the percentage is, really. Uh, but uh, that's easy to manage. I mean, I'm sure there are programs to manage that kind of thing. And, that, and that's why I all recommend you do that, to start with, to get your feet wet. And because you can achieve not instantaneous success, but faster success in, in my 29 years of doing this with you guys, is that the faster I can get you to see some success, not with the, uh, the, uh, the chairman, and said, but with a deal, the, the higher the probability you'll stick with it. And your wife stops nagging you, and why in the fuck are you doing this? You listen to that psychopath from the castle. Can't we get our money back? And blah, 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 blah. I've had people call here for their money back, their wives. You know, needless to say, we've never given anybody the money back. But uh, the, uh, so don't bother calling, sweet pea. Okay. Uh, anything else about Andreas? Who's my five thirty? Six, six thirty. Okay. Um, any questions? Now we're eating in the, uh, the hall again, uh, the mess hall, as we call it. Uh, I forget what we eat tonight, but oh, I think it's fish and chips. Yeah. Yeah. Question. I have a question, Mr. Pena. It's not referring to Andreas, uh, but I, you did mention uh, that Putin is going down. Putting the what down? Putin. Putin? Yeah. What about Putin? You said that he's going out. Well, before he annexed his part of Ukraine, uh, now he's supposed to have blood cancer. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. Um, it would be, uh, and I'm not wishing cancer on anybody. Uh, 
but it would be nice if he just exited uh, vis-a-vis uh, a sickness. But the next three guys under him make him look like a priest. The number two, three, and four guys are psychos. And you don't hear anything about that on BBC. Listen to Al Jazeera, the Arab station. They're more worried about number two, three, and four coming to power than they're worried about Putin lasting another five years. So, you know, the, uh, but if he annexes uh, oil price and some of the markets are starting to edge up because they think that there's, uh, as opposed to the nuclear bomb idea, uh, the annexation of part of um, Ukraine is a, is a better option, especially since Hungary and a bunch of those countries around there can't afford to turn off uh, the uh, gas and the, and the oil that uh, Russia supplies them because they'll go out of business. I mean, literally, they'll, they'll go bankrupt. 95% of the hydrocarbons, I believe, as I might have mentioned already, uh, that uh, Hungary gets in the form of gas and or oil comes from uh, directly or indirectly from Russia. I mean, Hungary, of course, my multi-gazillionaire, Peter, he doesn't, uh, but that's the last thing he wants after he's built up this fortune uh, for the country to go bust. But you never know. Shit happens. Shit happens. I mean, who would have thought that Trump was going to win when Clinton should have, Hillary, and now uh, Biden's pretty much assured not to win. And if Trump runs again, I'm, I'm almost positive Trump's going to win. And now he can be president eight more years. Because it's only eight years in a row. So he's president four years. And let's see, 75 now. No, 76. By the time he's in office, he'll be 78. He'll be fucking 86 and president. And so far, he does, as far as I know, he doesn't have any early signs of dementia or anything like that. He's certainly not in any good physical shape, so he could have a heart attack or something because he's overweight, but uh, yes, sir. You don't think they'll put him in prison? Pardon? You don't think they'll succeed in trying to put him in prison? The chances of him going to prison are the same as the chances of you being president. <laughs> I want to be a president. I just want to be a billionaire. We already got one Chicago thief, black thief that was president. You know? You go to Chicago, well, do you know any rich blacks? I mean, really rich guys? No. Okay. Well, the couple of rich blacks that I know, billionaire kind of guys, uh, the, um, the, uh, there's a reason why, and I don't know what it is, why Michelle Obama and uh, Barack have both had their law licenses taken away. There's a reason. Nobody brings it up, except me. There is a reason, and there, as one of the black billionaire guys said, in the infinite wisdom of the Chicago, uh, Illinois State Bar Association, he's making a joke, because they're all on the take, you know? If you can't buy your way out of a problem in Illinois, something, you ain't got any money, okay? In the infinite wisdom of the Illinois State Bar Association, uh, the Obamas can't practice law. There's a reason. So, um, the, uh, but they were part of the Daily Machine. No, she wasn't. He was part of the Daily Machine, you know, and he was in your neighborhood, if I remember what you said, okay? Collected money and. I know that's an organizer. That's what I'm trying to say, an organizer. But um, in the infinite wisdom of the Illinois Bar Association, he's been a smart ass, they can't practice law. And I do think Mrs. Trump was the best-looking lady, uh, first lady we've ever had, you know, irrespective. She married Donald, but anyway, she's a good-looking gal. She's a good-looking gal. Hmm? Well, I, I know. I didn't want to bring that up. In fact, as I said, uh, you know, as I fucking said it, I was saying, oh, fuck, Dan, why would you say that? Because of fucking <laughs> Mongoloid 1 and Mongoloid 2 are going to bring it up. Okay, guys, I'll see you at my 530 in a few minutes. Thank you.